I'm Stephen Ben-Danoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Some very interesting news coming out of Russia today. Uh, we've been monitoring several, several of the Russian newspapers there and online news sources. Uh, and uh, several of the articles that we bring out from the Moscow Times is, is very interesting. This one article caught uh, my attention more than any of the others. And as a result, I've taken a different look at the news that is at hand uh, across the globe today. It says here, U.S. bashing takes center stage at holiday show for Russian kids. Uh, this is in the Moscow Times. It says Russian holiday shows typically revolve around fairy tale plots and fantasy characters. But this year, some children have been treated to new themes, sanctions, Russian nuclear arsenals, and stupidity of the United States amid dismissal, uh, excuse me, dismal, dismal relations between Moscow and the U.S. over the crisis in Ukraine. A concert hall in the city of Lipstadt, some 400 kilometers south of Moscow, uh, regaled its young viewers with a heavily politicized performance featuring the character of U.S. President Barack Obama dressed as Santa Claus and State Department spokesman Jen Psaki as an elf, according to the video footage of the show posted online last month. The American character repeatedly testified to their nation's stupidity, while the Russian ones boasted of their country's nuclear arsenal. They are right to say in Russia... All Americans are dumb, the Obama character tells the audience. It's not my fault that I'm so stupid, the Pisaki character, uh, the Pisaki character seconds. After the elf proclaims that the U.S. has established our own world order and threatens sanctions, her Russian opponents in the show, dressed traditionally as fairy tale characters, respond with some vigorous flexing of military muscle. We now have new warriors defending Russia, and their names are Topo M. Ishkander and Balava. A Russian character says, ticking off the names of Russian ballistic mystical missile systems. The bear, excuse me. The episode culminates in a broadcast of a fragment of Pre President Vladimir Putin's speech to the uh, Valdau Discussion Club last year, during which he portrayed Russian annexation of Crimea as the actions of a proud bear standing its ground against U.S. imperialism. The bear will not ask anyone's permission, Putin said. In our part of the world, the bear is considered the master of the taiga. And I know for a fact that it is not intending to move to some other climatic zone. But it will not let anyone have its taiga. It's very serious, no doubt. It's as if Russia has its finger on the trigger. That Russian bear that even biblically is spoken about that would come against Israel. Of course, the United States is a great distance off, but not from Russia's nuclear arsenal. But it seems to be in other reports that are being reported out of, out of Russia that Russia is preparing not so much for a nuclear war with the United States, but rather they may be preparing for a ground war, not so much in the United States or possibly the U.S. or possibly somewhere else in the region, such as the runaway uh, Soviet nations from the former Soviet Union, like Georgia, Chechnya. Let me bring out some points here so you can see what we're talking about in this. In one article here that came out today, Putin signs a decree allowing foreigners into the Russian army. President Vladimir Putin has signed this, by the way, it was on January the 2nd that he signed this, uh, signed a decree authorizing foreign citizens to serve in the Russian army and interior minister troops, according to the document published on the Kremlin website. Now, my question is, why the interior ministry troops? Seems to me that there may be a plan for the regular military to be deployed away from the interior. And Russia may just be well preparing to defend its interior while the regular troops are battling in another area. Another interesting article that came out as well was that the uh, uh, Medvedev orders stockpiles of medicine as Russian ruble slumps. Prime Minister uh, Dmitry Medvedev has instructed the health ministry to stock up on life-saving medications to ensure medical supplies aren't affected by the drastic devaluation of Russia's ruble currency. There should be a stockpile. The health ministry should determine the amount of reserves, however you see fit. 
maybe three months, maybe six. It needs to be replenished as soon as the needs arises. But I have told Health Minister uh, Veronica Scott, whoa, Scott, Scott, I forget it. <laughs> Just say Veronica, I can't pronounce her last name. According to the transcript of the meeting posted Tuesday on the government's website. Now, the question is, is it really because of the falling ruble or is it because Russia is preparing for a possible ground war? Let's take a look at some other articles. Report names of birthplaces of Russian soldiers killed in the Ukraine. Now, this is an accusation against Russia here. There is an active, activist website. Uh, Open Russia has published a map detailing the birthplaces of all Russian soldiers believed to have died uh, fighting in Ukraine in 2014, with the largest group reported to have come from Moscow. Interesting in this report here, the report based on a list of names released in November by the uh, Gruz 200 Group, a pro-Ukrainian grassroots organization that used publicly available information to determine the number of identities of 227 men believed to have died fighting in Ukraine in 2014. Of course, Russia has denied such allegations in this here. Um, and, of course, uh, another interesting article as well. And could this have anything to do with the war efforts that, are, that, that could possibly be prepared for? Is an article, and this article here comes from TASS, another, news, uh, uh, another Russian news agency in Russia from Moscow. It says, uh, we have now uh, new warriors, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, <laughs> wrong article. Um, okay, TASS here, it says here in Moscow, December 31st, Russia plans to conduct around 30 launches of space carrier rockets from different spaceports in 2015, a source in the space rocket industry told TASS. According to the preliminary plans for 2015, Russia will conduct 12 Proton-M launches from Soyuz FG launches, three Soyuz uh, 2-1A uh, launches, and two launches are planned for each of the following uh, Dnepr I rocket, Soyuz U, and Soyuz U-2-1B, uh, and rocket... Uh, Rokot rocket. One launch is planned uh, for the Soyuz 2-1V and the uh, Zenet rocket. The launches will be conducted from three space, space, space ports from around the different parts of the Soviet Republic uh, Union, or the Soviet Union, uh, excuse me, around Russia. <laughs> so, but nonetheless, the question is, though, is why are there being so many launches being brought out? According to the article, it is expected that most of these are going to be uh, uh, for for the purpose of private ventures, but nonetheless, in the process of Russia is planning so many launches, maybe also preparing for any type of uh, military spying that they would need to do as well. So, quite interesting the articles that we had come out today in Russia, and and then yet there was a, also on Israeli news uh, the Arut Sheva's website. They brought out an article there that also concerned us as well here at Israeli News Live, and that was that the Bank of Israel bought seven billion U.S. dollars in 2014. Now, according to the article in Arut Sheva's website, there the purchase of the money was to help stabilize the Israeli currency. There's been a lot of money flowing into Israel, a lot of people buying up the shekels because of the deal that is being, the different deals are being made for the natural gas and oil supplies of Israel. It has hiked up the Israeli uh, value now. And so therefore, uh, the Israeli uh, shekel and the U.S. dollar had become kind of upside down. The shekel was more valuable. So what Israel did, according to them, was to buy up this type of uh, U.S. dollars to help balance out their own currency. It says here, the Bank of Israel in 2014 bought over $7 billion in an effort to prop up the value of the dollar versus the shekel. The purchases were made as a part of a two separate... Uh, programs want to offset the influence of the dollar on the value of the shekel as part of an everyday exchange rates, and the second to prevent the foreign currency set to pour into Israel as a result of natural gas deals from uh, overly influencing the value of the shekel. In recent, in recent weeks, the dollar has strengthened significantly, but for the last several years, the dollar was very, very was very weak against the shekel, with the uh, Israel currency rising. Uh, uh, Rising to as uh, has the NIS 3.25 after a low uh, um, about uh, 4.6 10 years ago. The high value of the shekel was a result of several trends. One of them, relatively higher interest rates in the Bank of Israel, had been had been paying. Now, the point that we see in this particular uh, article here is that if the U.S. economy were to collapse, 
then it also paves a way for Israel to collapse as well. Is this a possibility of a one world order, a new world order, a one world government? It is something that the Vatican is uh, looking forward to is to bring down the U.S. economy and Israel's economy at the same time, forcing Israel, Israel's hand at accepting whatever deal the European Union will offer them. And that would be the European Union, that would be the Vatican pushing the European Union's hand. It's stabilizing a one world global economy under a new world order. That seems very plausible in the, in, in, in the scope of things as well as we see the, the Dow has fell twice sharply here in the last week. And we also uh, keep in, in the back of our minds Jonathan, Jonathan uh, Kahn's uh, book about the U.S. dollar collapsing in September of 2015. If his book really is true, that this will actually take place and what he has predicted, this could be the start of a new world order. I'm Stephen Bendenu, Israeli News Live.